What would happen if settlers of Catan met risk? That's basically the question that my brother Seth and I pondered when we were designing our first board game together. We played a lot of Settlers of Catan back when it was all the rage, but like so many of you, we wanted to be able to send out an army across the island to raise somebody else's town, especially when they built in exactly the spot that you needed. Likewise, we used to play Risk quite a bit when we were younger, but one of the problems with that game is that there was not a resource or a construction element to it, just the mechanics for getting the reinforcements of your army. We wanted to blend those concepts together because we wanted to design the kind of game that we wanted to play. So that's what we did. We took the combat and conquest part of Risk and we blended that with a resource management and construction mechanic in inspired by Settlers of Catan. We called it War of Kings. That's why whenever I go to explain War of Kings to someone in the quickest way possible, the easiest way to do that is to say Settlers of Catan meets Risk. For resources, we divided the whole board into territories and gave each territory a primary and a secondary resource. Our resources were wheat, cattle, timber, and stone. We also had gold, but gold is generated by settlements, like towns and cities, when they're connected to the road network to your capital city. The gold represents the productivity and commerce of the kingdom. The resources are your raw materials. Each territory got a primary resource and a secondary resource. The number of units of each one of the resources that the territory generates is dependent upon the level of the settlement in the territory. Just controlling it gets you one unit of the primary resource. Having a village in it gets you two units of the primary resource. A town gets you three units of the primary resource, as well as one unit of the secondary resource. And a city gets you four units of a primary resource and two units of the secondary resource. But not every territory generates resources on each turn. Each territory also has a color, and we develop the resource dice which are rolled at the start of each round. Only the territories of the colors rolled generate resources that round, but every player at the table generates resources with the same dice roll. But each player has different, a different assortment of color and resource combinations around their starting domain, which gives you plenty of opportunities to wheel and deal and trade among players at the table. With your resources, you can build and upgrade settlements, build and upgrade fortifications from walls to fortresses to castles, and of course recruit armies. You can also build roads, which not only help your kingdom out economically by generating commerce and therefore gold, but also allowing your armies to move more quickly around your kingdom. The construction phase of the game is simultaneously played by all players at the table. We thought that was a great innovation because during early playtests, we had each player build on his or her turn, and that just took too long waiting for everyone to build their stuff on their individual turns. So, simultaneous play ended up being the way to go. That just left everyone to move their armies, explore, and fight on their individual turns. So, yes, we did also have an exploration element to the game, because when you send armies out into a territory that has not been previously explored by some other army, there is a table you roll on to see what is in the territory. It could be empty, you could get free resources, you could encounter a plague, or there could be enemy marauders in the territory. We introduced this idea of a barbarian horde into the game, which are out there in unexplored territories. Sometimes you have to fight them off, and at other times, on your turn, you can take control of the marauders and use them to attack your enemies. Then, of course, there is combat. We designed this combat system by building a script in Python and then simulating the battles thousands of times. That would also allow us to adjust certain parameters, rerun the simulations, and then see what happened with those changes. We wanted each army to be very significant, so having one army in a territory is a big deal. Having more than one is even a bigger deal. We used different attack dice, defend dice, and then bonus dice for more armies in a territory, 
and then also bonus dice for the defender if he or she is defending a territory with some kind of fortification in it. And of course, higher levels of fortification provide more defense. Creating War of Kings was the first creatively entrepreneurial project that I ever did. So not only did we learn everything about game design and board game prototyping, but then my brother and I had a baptism by fire in running a Kickstarter campaign to get the game funded. Then we also had a baptism by fire when we learned how to get the game manufactured overseas and then freighted over to us. Then we learned all about packing and shipping the games ourselves and how much storage space 1,000 Games of War of Kings actually takes up. Seth was kind enough to dedicate a room in his basement for all of the game storage and then game and uh, company operations at that time. So War of Kings really was what started it all. It's what got me started down the path of being a creative entrepreneur in the tabletop space and everything that's gone along with that. It has been a wonderful experience. If you would like to know more about the game, I have all of the original videos that we shot from the behind the scenes development of the game to the game trailer and also how to play and strategy videos all here on my YouTube channel. So you can click over and learn a whole lot more about the game. There's also a digital copy of the rulebook available online if you want to open that up and read through it and see what we did with the game. Then you can figure out how we did. Did we achieve our goal of blending together Settlers of Catan and Risk? Let us know in the comments section. I still have a few copies of War of Kings left, and I do mean a very few. They are over on ravenkeep.net, and I can only ship them to the United States. So if you want one, that's the place to go. If you've enjoyed this video, please check out my channel. I've got a lot of videos there related to tabletop gaming and fantasy there that you will enjoy. I will see you in another video.